Every day I would wake up and I'd be on page six in the paper and it would be like, hunky singer songwriter Pete Yorn yeah. <laughs> was <laughs> best friends with beer chugging chucklehead Josh Sagman from the Ham. A million yeah. people watched. It was ABC television. It was on ABC. It was on ABC. And back then, there was only five stations. Ten, uh -huh. You know, it was ABC, NBC, Fox. It wasn't the yeah. whole conglomerate of cable. So I would have so, thought VH1. I thought it would have been on VH1. Yeah. But back then, yeah, I mean, yeah, but this is two, 2009. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago. I mean, it was like we were up against the, uh, we were the number two watch show against the, um, what is it, the, the NBA playoffs. Really? Yeah, because they were running at like the same time when we wow. ran. We ran like beginning of the summer after the summer they filmed us. And we had the whole Lizzie Grubman thing. I don't know if you remember so that. So it was the playoffs she... and then you guys? Yeah. I mean, they had like 16, I don't whatever million it was. We were 9 million something. Like when you look at the the view things, I'm like, now I'm like, it's hard because you have so many stations. Yeah. So, we, But we were up there back then. If I was so. number two after the NBA yeah. playoffs, you better get a pin and well, pop I've my head. I've been successful. I guess the best way to sum it up is, you know, um, I'm right in that middle. Um, you know, Generation X. So my dad's age group, you know, they didn't know about cell phones and technology. They did deals on the golf course and shook hands. Yeah. Um, you know, Sean over there, his millennial age group, they push a button and reach a thousand people. Yeah. There's goods and bads with both of them. The goods about is is with being able to push a thousand people is you're getting in front of a lot of people. But they've also, a lot of ways, lost that personal communication. They lost that. If you're going to do a business deal, or you're going to do. You still need to know who you're doing a business. I want to watch body language. Absolutely. When I, when I was this is the time if you have a business in South Florida, to sell. And the only, and I'm not just saying it to because as I said, I could care less. Like I, I say all the time, and I get in trouble. But I'm like, look, it's not going to affect my lifestyle, <laughs> yeah. whether I sell your business or I don't sell your business. But there's so many people right now that want to change, and I have too many buyers and not enough inventory. You know, and we have a lot, you know, we, I have a lot of inventory, but if, if you know, if, if you're thinking and, and you've said, all right, for 10 years you're bored or whatever it is that you would want to sell, and with what you're saying, if you open up a business, you open up with a company, and you've got projections where we can say, look, over the course of three, four, five years, you're going to do this much, put it on the market because we can sell it off a of pro forma. Yeah. We can sell it off of, you know, this is the direction we're going. We've got residual. With COVID, we stayed at this. You know, we, uh, but that would be my one bit of recommendation for people that are own businesses and listen to us and are saying, is it a, you know, or at least talk to somebody, call myself or talk to any business broker. But now is the time in here, just like residential real estate people. Like, they're all like, oh, we don't have any houses. We don't have apartments. You know, there's a big influx of people right now that want to be in Pre flow. all the, um, you know, the reality shows. Yeah. And a lady came up to us and was like, look, we want to film you. We want to film you for a reality show. Really? What year um, is this? This was, they filmed us in 99. Really? Wow. And the f show was called The Hamptons. Yeah. So they started with 20 people. They narrowed it down to 10 people. Those 10 people ended up being uh, Paris and Nikki Hilton. Oh, boy. It was uh, Billy Joel's daughter. It was uh, Puffy and his whole little group. They had a girl looking for true love in the Hamptons, a couple of Irish workers, and uh, myself and my timeshare group. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you have all these people and then you. Yeah. It doesn't really fit. Well, with... it, it fit, but we were the energy of it. And the crazy part is, and this is the, the end of the story where it got kind of nuts, was this is pre-reality shows. So for us... We were kind of like the first people to go out there and like every weekend for the whole summer we had film crews and they'd be following us and we'd be doing different things and like whether it was skydiving or going to a little place called Neptunes. I don't know if you remember Neptunes yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, day yeah, or whatever it was. And it was it was kind of cool. But what happened was our business was growing. So the show came out. And we were basically like the poster childs for what they didn't want in the Hamptons. You know, we're 23 years old. You know, opening scene is uh, girls in the jacuzzi and, you know, keg stands and, you know, everything else. So the show comes out and there's a little rule in the Hamptons that says you're only allowed five unrelated guests per single family house. And this is from years ago. This was from... 